Hello, everyone. This is Tom Fox, and I'd like to welcome you to the Daily Compliance News. The Daily Compliance News is an offering of the Compliance Podcast Network. January 2, 2018, the We Are Sugar Bowl Champs edition. Congratulations to my Texas Longhorns for winning last night. Some of the top compliance and corruption stories for today include an article from the Financial Times called Facebook Still in the Dock After Tsunami of Crises, uh, the problems that Facebook will face going forward into 2019. This will include a very serious challenge in the United Kingdom and the EU over data privacy and, of course, with a new Congress, additional calls for regulation. Next up, we have a very interesting article from the New York Times about technology companies utilizing data-driven nudges to make a workplace better, if not even happier. There is a startup called Humu, which is using people analytics programs to study things like (coughs) traits of great managers and how to foster better teamwork. For those in the compliance space who want to utilize nudges to help create more ethical behavior and a greater culture of compliance. This is certainly something that you should watch going forward. Next, we had a very interesting article from the New York Times in the arts section about a New York or a Broadway show which utilizes an FBI transcript as the basis for the show. And this is not uh, something that's hasn't been done before, but it is a way for you as a compliance officer to think about utilizing uh, different types of information for your training. So uh, using, for instance, uh, ongoing or rather reported FCPA cases to help illustrate your points. If Broadway can sell it, you certainly should be able to as well. And finally, a very disturbing article about conflicts of interest at Sloan Kettering, where Recent revelations of the hospital's top medical officer and other leaders had cultivated lucrative relationships with for-profit companies and uh, pharmaceutical companies and others in the medical supply services and device industry. And it really demonstrates that um, you have to have a robust conflicts of interest policy. This has become more critical in the healthcare industry, which now has 20% of the nation's economy. So many hospitals are facing similar crises, but if even if you're in a non-medical uh, <clears throat> care and services industry, it's something that you need to think about the conflicts of interest uh, between your employees and your suppliers Are you monitoring this as robustly as you are other conflicts and certainly uh, corruption, fraud, and other types of nefarious conduct? If it can happen at a place called Sloan Kettering, which is generally recognized as one of the leaders, uh, excuse me, one of the nation's top cancer hospitals, it could happen anywhere. So once again, congratulations to the Texas Longhorns. As I previously announced, I'm going to continue the daily compliance news each day going forward into 2019. So if there's something you'd like me to take a look at, please feel free to send it to me at tfox at tfoxlaw.com. Thank you. Also, I hope you will check out some of the new offerings on the Compliance Podcast Network. Jay Rosen and myself have started a new podcast series, Popcorn and Compliance, a look at compliance through the lens of the movies that premiered Saturday, December 8th. And we'll post bi-monthly on Saturday for your entertainment and enjoyment listening pleasure. Finally, Mary Shirley and Lisa Fine have premiered their new podcast, Great Women on Compliance. I hope you will check that out. It's a great podcast series. We have several other offerings that we are in production and will go live after the first of the year on the Compliance Podcast Network.